and available to you as and when you need it. I really wish there was one because the way these invoices grow legs and disappear. I believe this is what you're looking for. Eh? eh? Now how did it get there? Tabo. Do you know that with Efris you can stay on track of all your business transactions and improve on your record keeping? How so? Katituli ku computer with Efris. I just search using the fiscal document number and I retrieve the records I'm looking for. Bookkeeping becomes simple after that. <laughs> Kapo, also me. I began using URS Kakasa solutions and now I'm in charge of my business and you can as well. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority. Good morning to you, our dear taxpayers. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Tax Mutuzi. We'd love to apologize for the delay starting, but we experienced a technical glitch that has since been worked on and we are ready to rumble. Uh, in studio today, I am joined by a, a tax expert, uh, Hafsa Seguia. She'll be taking us through our topic of tax filing and tax filing and payments. My name is Anand Priska. I'll be your moderator today while Jotham is away on sick leave. Jotham, our prayers and thoughts go out to you. Do get well soon. So in today's discussion, like I mentioned, we're going to discuss income tax filing and returns. What are the do's? What are the don'ts? What do you need to do to make sure you meet your tax obligations before the deadline day? What do you have to do before the whistle blows off on 31st December 2022. Uh, at this point, allow me to invite our guest to introduce herself and just share a few opening remarks. Hafsa, please take it away. Thank you very much, Priska. Hafsa Segui are my names from uh, the Tax Literacy Unit that is resident in the Domestic Taxes Department. We are glad to be here once again to make a few reminders here and there, clarity to our clients. Because ideally this is a part of the season where we expect a particular returns, but today we want to put more energy on uh, income tax return. Before I demand the return, I want you to understand what income tax is. Ideally everybody opens business with, um, with uh, a wish, with a thought, with a plan of getting income. So whatever income is sourced from that business, ideally is what we call business income. It is sourced from that business and at the end of the day, once it does not have any exemption on it, that's when I will pick the word income tax. It is tax on that particular income that one has probably gotten from their business activities. So here we have, um, we have a consortium of incomes. Yes, income tax is, is general, where you will find a business income resident there. But ideally, we also have rental income. Because you could not be actually be doing the business, that, the trade, the buying and selling. But ideally, you have income that is sourced out of letting out uh, property or letting out space. And uh, you earn from that. So you are part of the people I would want to address uh, uh, these words too, that this is more or less the time to see that you ideally send in that return before the year closes. Yes, income tax and managing it, we manage it under the Income Tax Act, that, that is CAP 340. And ideally we have, um, we have due dates because you'll ask why now? Yes, we didn't come yesterday, but now is, we are more or less uh, close to the deadline and would want to remind you that in the event that your accounting date is a default accounting date, that is the 30th June, then uh, ideally your provisional is uh, due by the 31st of December. For those that are non-individual, those are company, those are trusts, those are trading in uh, quite a different arrangement, um, the NGOs still, we are still under the same uh, due dates. But in the event that one is trading as an individual, ideally that individual when you're on the default accounting date of 30th June, your, your return was due on the 30th of September. 
However, better late than never. Yes, it was it's late, but it's fair for you to send in that provisional return now before it gets more later than um, what it would have happened. Because ideally, whenever you give us this return late, the um, issues that could come by, because it may pick a penalty because of late filing. So that's why we come up and raise this call to our clients to see that put everything together. I understand you have been recording, doing some business record keeping. Then this is the time the records are going to help us uh, get those um, totals, get those um, all that we need to get and put in uh, the income tax return, the provisional. So that you paint a picture and ideally to our clients. Um, when we are talking about income tax, it's not that everybody who files a return may have a payment. One may file a nil because depending on the business, probably they've done nothing in the first six months. Uh, here I could give you an example. If it's a construction firm, ideally construction firms get bids uh, where they can execute. But maybe from um, July, maybe from July to December or July to right today, you haven't gotten anything you have done. Or you are just signing out something that ideally hasn't picked any income. So at that particular time, you are free to file that nail return because there's nothing that has come out. The difference in between such uh, sectors and maybe the wholesale and trade, wholesale and trade each and every day there's something that comes in, you buy, you sell, you buy, however small or big uh, activity happens. But for some businesses, activity happens maybe quarterly, maybe it comes when it is big, but comes in a particular pattern. So that's why I was giving an example of a construction firm. Yes, you could file and it is nil, it is well okay. Because you're painting that picture for you are to know that yes, I am still there, I am in business, but things haven't worked out well, then that is okay. Because when you go back and look at the obligations of our clients, filing is an obligation. It is one of the activities we expect you to do. Because failure to file, that means you are giving back the duty to your A to think for you. And that is when my default assessment will come in picture. When I start thinking, for you, looking at the colleagues in your in sector, those who have filed, I use the industrial average to get a baseline where I'm starting. That is one. So that means I made a portion, a particular amount to you as tax and actually nothing has happened. So uh, dear clients, if those who have tuned in, kindly know that this is an obligation where you need to file because a return is an information document fine you may have not gotten any income but we need to know what has happened at your end so that we will probably wait and see what will happen maybe as we are getting close to the end of the year so what i'm getting is a return is just an information document exactly to let you are in in what you've been doing what your business exactly. looks like and so you mentioned that uh, I always have to file my returns, whether I'm making a profit or not, the new return. So if I'm a business person and I am completely in losses, it's okay for me to just file that new return. Exactly. Right? It is okay for you to paint whatever picture is at your place. Because the URA is operating a self-assessment regime where we need these clients to assess themselves. And how will they assess themselves? The platform is filing the return then putting figures there that will help us determine whether there's something that is payable or there is nothing. But at least bridge that gap. Because once you don't bridge it, then penalty is auto-computed by the system. Once they wait for that return and uh, 31st December closes, then ideally the system is going to place a, a penalty in your, in, your, in your inbox. And you'll find it there and you need to make it good. So we do not want to go that far or that side because these penalties actually eat up our profits and when the profits are done they'll even eat up our capital and once your capital is eaten up I may not find you there yet my interest as URA is to get as many businesses on board and ensure that these businesses stay alive they stay moving and working moving forward because these are the same people who are going to give me the taxes year in year out so my duty is to see that when a business comes on board 
how can I help it to stay alive exactly? And have so you mentioned something about provisional mm. returns. Yes. And these provisional returns, are they amendable? If you know during the year I've got um, I want to make some subtractions or additions. Am I allowed to amend this? Ideally, this yes, because once you file a provisional, it's now that we are talking about provisional returns. Let me imagine this is an, an individual. You file the provisional by the 31st of December. Then in January, because business is, is dynamic, it's not static. Mm -hmm. Something happens, you have more sales, you have this, you have that. Kindly do make any amendment. We don't mind as okay. many amendments as can happen on a provisional. Provided by the 30th of June, before midnight, you're done okay. with your amendments. Because okay. what happens, the final position that will be on the system by that time is what we are going to take. Because that means you, the time will be out for you to do the amendments on a provisional return. Okay. So that's why we want us to manage it in such a manner. Oh, okay, that's very insightful. Thank you, Hafsa. So you mentioned penalties. Yes. In the event that I do not file on time, or I fail to submit my return, what are those? What are some of those penalties? Ideally, when uh, a return is uh, submitted later than the time we expect it, that's the due date. Mm. Uh, we have a penalty of two hundred thousand. Uh, okay. Each month this return is late or not submitted or not yet received by the system. Okay. Because if a return is late now and uh, we are not seeing it, then when we come to January, it plants at 200,000. So by the end of January, if you are not seeing it, another 200. So it becomes 400. So ideally, we want you to paint that picture for us so that we ensure that this business, these penalties do not eat up. Yes. Our, our capital don't eat up our profits. Oh. Because once they eat up your profits, then at the end of the day, I don't want you to do business just for formality. <laughs> I want you to do business when you're actually getting something out of it, then on that something that comes out is what you pick from and give us taxes. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's clear that you, you'd rather you know, be proactive than reactive. And in the event I'm an accountant and I just can't beat the deadline, 31st December, can I apply for an extension, uh, you know, an extension that... Yes, you can apply for an extension to file a return because it's mm -hmm. clearly uh, mentioned in, in the tax law that you can mm -hmm. uh, apply for an extension in section, I think it's about 18 of the TPC, mm -hmm. where you can apply for an extension it's mm. done online and tell us the preferred date that you feel you will be in position to give us this return. However, the extension should not exceed 90 days because oh, we want okay. it in the scope of uh, within that particular financial year okay. so that we can properly manage that return. So ideally that is possible, but we want you to apply for an extension before the due date. Oh. We don't want you to wait for the due date to pass. <laughs> you, you wait for a penalty to come, then you apply for an extension. Then, I mean, it will not remove the, the, the penalty. Okay. It can't remove the penalty because yeah. you'll need to pay the penalty and I, again, you will need to file that return. So it's better you apply for the extension earlier, then we handle it, approve, you get a notification, then you're very well sure that we have approved your request. Okay. Yes. And then just for clarity, is the deadline for payment the same as deadline for filing the returns? Ideally, yes. Oh, because when we okay. say a due date, once you pay and uh, uh, once you file and you assure there is a resultant tax, kindly make, make it good before the due date expires. Okay. Yes. So the other thing is, can a taxpayer apply for installment payment? Sometimes I file my return, but I just don't have the money to pay up the tax? Ideally, yes, because uh, the institution is flexible. Okay. We know there are challenges in business. And if there are challenges in business, we do not want to be that tight. There are provisions of how you can apply for installment payment. There is an application. Once you're interested in that, there is an application that you fill.
and okay. uh, you bring the the application physically to our service centers any service center that is near you with an identification but we want clearly to tell us which uh, which liability under which tax type do you want us to spread over the installments you've given us okay. because it could be income tax it could be vat oh, it yes. could be payers and depending so you tell us even when you, we will pick the payment. Because if you tell us three installments, yes. But we want you to be clear. On the 30th day of every month, that okay. is when we will be picking. So that we are clear, we are going to be reminding you close to the 30th day. Oh, yes. So that we don't keep nagging you, calling you every now and then. Please. We know when we need to keep reminding you okay. of uh, the commitment you made. But normally our installments, we don't want them to go as uh, uh, far as five. Normally we, we operate in between two to four so that we can we can manage this liability within that year. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's, thank you very much, Hafsa, for that. Uh, so what are some of the benefits of making sure you meet your return filing on time and you pay your taxes on time? Ideally, one of the benefits is um, when you have filed this return, you are sure that you have painted the right picture. Okay. And therefore, I will not need to estimate you. There is no default yes. assessment that will come through because you've ideally given us your side. Yes. Second, uh, you are doing away with uh, the penalty once you file on time. Yes. There is no need for a penalty to come in. And once you equally pay on time, then we are doing away with the interest bit of it. And secondly, once and, and maybe lastly, once you're compliant in that way, you can benefit in a number of ways. Most of our clients apply for tax clearance certificates. Oh, yes. Maybe when you're going to bid, you're going to do this. So normally those are the things we check out with. So, exactly, we are checking out, do you file on time? Are you, is your filing updated? What is your liability? Okay. Uh, do you have plans to clear it? All those nitty gritties we want to manage you because it's called a tax clearance certificate. We are clearing you of the outstanding arrangement and the outstanding whatever is there on your profile. So ideally we are looking at you benefiting from what we have, the withholding tax exemptions, mm -hmm before we could give you an exemption, we need to see that actually you yeah, are behaving in the expected record. way. Yes. The track record is good. We have the AEO under customs, mm -hmm. the authorized economic mm -hmm. operator. Yes. How will you benefit from it yet on this side? You are not mm -hmm. in the best shape. Mm -hmm. So ideally, compliance on its own uh, will uh, encompass the registration, the record keeping, the filing and the payment. So once it is done well and perfectly well, then you'll be able to benefit okay. from whatever is available for any client. Okay. Thank yes. You, so, dear taxpayers, I'm sure you've heard from the expert, it pays to be compliant. It pays for you to make your, your returns on time and to pay your taxes on time. Uh, at this point, there is some questions coming in from the Q&A. Uh, okay, so um, John Paul from Marua is asking, the URS system is sometimes very slow during peak filing season. How is URA managing these technical issues to make it easy for the taxpayer to file their returns and make payments on time? Thank you very much. How are we managing it? Uh, maybe to take you back a bit, when I say your return is due, by this date, I haven't told you to go on the system on the 31st. <laughs> I am giving you these six months to see how best you can sort yourself. Okay. Kindly sort yourself before traffic gets on the system. Okay. Because if we all go on the 31st, kindly, sincerely, what do you expect? You are on with a return, one is on with an objection, the other one is on with another application, and we are all on on the same time. In fact, to our dear clients, utilize the night. Oh, okay. Wait for the traffic to end by about 6 or 7. Just get on the system at 9 or 10. It is very swift. And file your return. 
you will not have these challenges here and there. However, notwithstanding the fact that there could be uh, maybe ch system challenges, we are always on uh, on watching where the delays could be mm -hmm. and see how best we can patch up. But kindly use the time, the flexi time when ideally there is no traffic on the system. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. John Paul from Arua, I'm sure you've, you've taken note of those insights. Get on to the system as early as possible, as early as now, and file your returns and make those payments before, you know, before 31st December. Uh, the other question, this one is coming in from Tina from Chihuahua. She's asking, how is URA prepared to support clients through this period? Uh, people are going to the village, it's Christmas season, it's all these festivities. How can they also continue to meet the tax obligations? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tina. Um, when you look at uh, the way URA is working now, Okay. We are migrating from the menu to the digital platforms. We have a number of digital channels that are up and running. Okay. Ideally, when uh, you have any challenge with filing, we are on WhatsApp on 772-14 code row zero. We have the toll free 0800-117000, 0800-217000. You can send a mail at services at ura.go.ug. So we have a number of uh, digital channels that you can use whereby you can even avoid, you can avoid interfacing with us. You no longer need to walk or put in transport and come unless the challenge needs a, a lot of understanding that you feel you need to come to URA. And secondly, yes, fine, we're in the festive season. Our offices don't close for Christmas. Okay. Uh, we basically close on public holidays. That will be on 25th, and ideally 25th yes. is a Sunday. Yes. So maybe it will be 26th, which will be a Monday. That's the only public holiday I expect right now. So apparently will be open. You can go and inquire. We handhold you. We help you. And um, at the end of the day, you can get a solution. We have a contact center that works uh, up to late in the night, about 10, 11. You can also make use of it when you use the toll-free lines. They will be able to help you. We have a number of channels here and there that mm -hmm. are waiting for our clients in case of any challenge while they are filing their returns. Okay. Thank yes. you, uh, Dear taxpayers, reach out to us. Reach out through remotely if you can't come to you know the of the service stations, uh, but we are here to help you make it easy for you to meet your tax obligations. There is another question coming in from YouTube, Helen Katushabe. She's asking, um, I registered my teen for presumptive business, and at the beginning of the business it fails. How do I handle that? She's having trouble with her teen. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, you registered for taxes. That means we assigned you a TIN. Because uh, getting a TIN is when you register for taxes with an anticipation that you're going to do business. Yes. Ideally, presumptive is just a mode of how you can give us a return. You don't register for presumptive, but you register for income, income tax. tax. Because ideally, when you're filing under presumptive, it is income tax. Yes, business may not have moved in the direction that you expected and uh, maybe things are not well. Kindly for now, do file and tell us whatever has come out of that. Okay. And uh, for income tax for uh, SMEs, those are a little small in nature as in turnover and all that. Once you don't exceed 10 million, then ideally there is no tax you're going to pay us. But the most important thing is meet your obligation of filing this return so that we can actually know that your business worked to this tune or there is no tax to be paid. And maybe in future, as you see, you, you are meant to close and there is nothing much you can do. There are no hopes of our business coming back to life again. Kindly do not forget to reach out to URA and deactivate this team so that we can freeze it a bit as you sort yourself. Once business is up and running again, you could come back to us in the same breath. Okay. We could reactivate it for you to resume your business. 
Okay. Okay. I believe Helen's Helen's question has been answered. Uh, we're going on to two more questions. Uh, Chandiga Gilbert is asking, what are the remedies in case a taxpayer has not been compliant and the tax liability piles up? Are they able to settle the outstanding liability in installments as they continue doing business? Thank you very much. What happens when there is liability and you have failed? We've already talked about installment payment. Yes. Once you feel uncomfortable, kindly reach out to us. We normally have solutions eh, whereby we can break it down a bit. You continue working while you're paying back, paying back until uh, the outstanding is probably managed. But if you stay out there and you don't come, in most cases when we fail, communicate to you and we can't reach you, then we are left with no choice. At times we use uh, third-party agencies whereby we could, um, we could know who are your suppliers, who are the people you supply. Instead of paying you, actually we go and they pay you <laughs> RA. Instead of you until the liability is done, uh, you can go on receivership. In case you have an entity, we can manage it for you and see that whatever comes out first clears the liability. Then uh, maybe the other one we fail, we can... Uh, we can attach your accounts, we can uh, do third-party agency in the bank, and you see whatever is there, if it can clear your liability. Okay. Uh, once that is done, once, once that may not yield what we need, mm. we go as far as prosecution, and we go in the courts of law. But we wouldn't want to go that far when we have solutions that uh, can help us speak to you. Okay. If we have uh, remedies of speaking to you, knowing how best we can handle, I think those are the remedies our clients should use. Mm -hmm. Because we want, we want to create a human face on taxation. We wouldn't want to appear as we are pushing you to the wall to close oh, this yes. business. Okay. But we want to help you manage this liability moving forward so that you continue working as you are, basically complying to your obligations. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hafsa, Gilbert seems like someone who would benefit from the voluntary disclosure initiative. A voluntary disclosure? Yes. Not really because voluntary disclosure speaks that. Okay. In the event that you file this return and you accidentally omitted transactions okay. or you intentionally omitted transactions, before you are awake up to alert you that look here, these transactions are omitted. Kindly come first before we could do that. Okay. That is when you can benefit from the voluntary disclosure. When you haven't gotten any notification, any written, mm -hmm. um, any written communication from URA on that particular ground, come before URA and tell us kindly, I would like to amend, amend this, this return. Amend this. I would like to include this. Okay. If that happens before, anything is triggered from URA. That is when you can um, benefit from voluntary disclosure okay. because that means that all the additions you're going to do in these returns will imply that we'll only look at the principal. We will not need to compute any penalty and interest. So that's how voluntary disclosure works. works. But okay. Gilbert's case means that Gilbert already has liability. <laughs> so voluntary disclosure can't <laughs> come in him. in any way because <laughs> their liability is already formed. And we want to see how we can help him okay. manage this liability alongside the business continuing working. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Hafsa. Uh, you know, we've been talking about income tax. And what are the other tax returns that taxpayers should have at the back of their minds, you know, and make sure to, feel to fulfill their tax obligations on as well. Exactly. When we talk about income tax, at the beginning I mentioned rental income tax. Ideally, I'm also addressing those who uh, source income through renting or letting out okay. property and space. So in the same manner, it goes to income tax once again because mm. it is part of income tax. We are looking at uh, pay as you earn. Yes, it's uh, mm, also okay. a form of income tax in one way or the other, but it is a monthly obligation. Okay. Whereby when I am in uh, December, I expect the November return to reach URA by the 15th. That means that you use those days from the 1st to the 15th to see that your return can reach us so that we are closing that gap for you. And maybe 
the other we can look at because we've talked about um, pay as you earn, we've yeah. talked about rental and maybe withholding tax. Because withholding tax is a form of income tax and the arrangement is still the monthly arrangement. In that when if in the event that we designated you to be an agent. So once you've, uh, you've withheld from the different suppliers who you have worked with for that month, kindly do put everything in order, then submit that return, say the November return by the 15th of December. So all those are forms of income tax and uh, they have different due dates because some are half annual, some are quarter annual, some are monthly. So they have different due dates, but okay. clearly they feed into income tax. tax. Yes. So I take it that like, taxes like VAT, that's a completely different... Yeah, VAT is not an income okay. tax. VAT okay. is a consumption tax. Yes, it takes uh, the monthly arrangement of filing, but it is not in the income tax family. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, there is another question from... Um, Helen, Kellen again, she's saying, is money lending taxable? If yes, what is the threshold? Thank you very much. Um, money laundering, one, lending, one, lending. Yeah. one because uh, you have to register with uh, um, the relevant tax body. Mm -hmm. The relevant tax body, because once you have a business, yes, you register with us, but okay. it is, uh, you are managed under different uh, institutions because we have the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. Ideally, there is something for you because you're doing something that is close to what mm -hmm. a bank does. So you need to first get the license from there. After the license is good, then you register for taxes okay. here in URA. So it takes the normal cause. If it's a limited company, then ideally we are taxing it the same way. We need to know your gross, you need to know your business expenses, we need to ascertain the allowable expenses, yes. and at the end of the day we ascertain the chargeable income onto which we are going to charge tax at 30%. So ideally it's the same just because it's a different business. But before you start it, you have to be very clear and ascertain a license. There is a license you need to get to be able to lend out. Okay. It's not obvious that uh, I could start uh, maybe my, my retail shop uh, and there are certain businesses that have some restrictions. They need to know your details and how you're going to, the methodology of how you do it. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm. So one last one. As we wind up, would you please just break it down to the, you know, to the simplest way. How do I file this return? Where do I go? How do I do it? Just Thank you very much. As we clearly talked about filing a return is painting that picture of how your business has been moving in terms of uh, your sales for that particular time. If it's a final return at this time, depending on your accounting date, we need a clear, uh, we need a clear um, summary of uh, what your expenses have been, your business expenses, because we have allowable deductions that they have to fit in. So when you wake up in the morning and you are going to file a return, I would expect you to have your TIN handy with you. I would expect you to have your password. Okay. Your password is that secret password or that secret number or numbers or phrase that you're going to input in the URA system. Visit the web portal on www.ura.go.ug. Once you reach the portal page, you will just look on your right hand side. We have an icon that has login. Kindly click there. It will give you a provision where you put your login ID, that's your TIN, where you put your password, and then click login down. That means it's opening your account for you. Okay. How do you prove that you're in your account? Mm -hmm. You're going to look still on the right hand mm -hmm. corner. It will be welcoming you. Hello, Priscilla. Hello, Hafsa. Hello, Jean. Hello, this limited, whatever it is. So there you are sure that you're in your account. Then you clearly look on your left hand side, just below where you'll find returns. Kindly put your cursor there, click. We have a number of returns. The system will ask you, is it a provisional, is it a final? So once it's a final, a 
And once it's a final, kindly go on finals and it will bring that drop down there. Is it income tax? Is it this? Is it that? So once it's a provision, ideally it's the same, it's the same thing. It will avail a template that you'll need to download. Mm -hmm. Once you download that template, that means you are getting it from the system and putting it on your desktop. So you start working by inputting the figures there. Okay. How much was your gross and everything. Once you are done with all that nitty gritty, then you're saving it on your desktop. Okay. You will go back again at the portal page where you stopped mm -hmm. and you need to upload. You say, mm -hmm. I'm uploading it. Then you're picking it from a, a, a site. Where did you keep it? That's your desktop. <laughs> yes. Go to your desktop, scroll, see the way you saved it. Come put it here. Then upload it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once That's it gives easy. you a message that it has gone, then mm -hmm. that is all. Yes. It is as easy as ABC, just like she has described it. And remember, if you face any challenges, always reach out to us on social media. You can call us on our toll free, and you can also walk in, and you know, and we will be happy to help. Uh, Hafsa, you talked about allowable deductions. Yes. So I'm thinking someone in Chikubo would probably be wondering. What are my allowable deductions? Allowable deductions are basically expenses you have incurred in the course of that year that are business related, are expenses that have helped you in the production of that income. Okay. For example, we have rent. That without you having paid rent, okay. then you wouldn't have worked there. And in most cases, you wouldn't have gotten that income. We have a trading license that without you having paid the trading license, maybe your shop would have been locked. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's nothing. We have the general purchases mm -hmm. that you do purchase if you're in trade, yes. uh, wholesale and uh, maybe retail. So whatever comes out from the purchases mm -hmm. is an expense that is allowed. Then uh, we could have um, electricity, utilities. Mm -hmm. utilities. Once it's justifiable, and maybe it is in your names, and it's very clear. Those are part of the allowable deductions. Okay. And I mean the electricity bill for the shop, <laughs> not, <laughs> not for your, your home. Personal <laughs> exactly, yeah. because even though you sleep in the darkness, <laughs> you, can, you can source <laughs> this income. <laughs> yes, so we are looking at exactly what pertains to this business that is generating the income that you are trying to put in the return. Okay, okay, yes. that's very informative. Uh, Aki Businja has written in, she, the, the, and he or she is saying, um, I'm stuck where to begin from. Since last year, I could not upload the income tax returns. Maybe what we need to tell that client is to go to the nearest office oh, yes. to be helped. I don't know where she is, but if she had indicated where she's probably calling from will direct them to the nearest office. Okay. We have our service centers open because that is uh, probably it's, we, we, we need to go through and walk the journey with this client okay. moving forward for them to be able to comply. Okay. Thank you so much, Hafsa. It has been a very, very informative session. I'm sure our taxpayers have picked up uh, quite a bit. Okay, there is another question coming in today. The questions are coming in heavy. Uh, so this person is saying, I missed filing for income tax for 2021 and I was assessed in the process. We came to an argument of payment, uh, but the challenges, I could not go ahead and file for the same period. Okay, they struggled with the payment. And I think this is still Jackie Businger. Mm. Um, like you said, let her visit her but there's something she brought out that she met, missed filing for, yeah, 2020, for 2021, yes. 2022. And in the process, she yeah. was assessed. Exactly. We have a provision a where, fine, she was assessed, but I don't know whether she's in agreement of uh, whatever assessment came through. Uh, but okay. once you're not in agreement, we have a provision where you could object. You could object to this particular assessment, and uh, objection is done within 45 days, from when you have received the assessment. Okay. However, you could also apply for filing a late objection if that time has already passed. That means we are going to give you a leeway in the objection a module. We are giving you a leeway that in the event that you forgot 
to file or you are caught up by time and you do not agree with this estimated assessment, kindly tell us which amount you agree with okay. on this particular assessment you're objecting to. And secondly, kindly do file now. Okay. Whatever you would have done then that you didn't manage to do, kindly do it now and ideally it should rhyme with the amounts that you say you agree with so that we can handle it once. We handle the return and we handle the objection in itself to look at the amounts that you agree with. And those that you don't agree with, kindly put for us reasons that you feel you don't agree with them. Okay. Chucky Businja, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard from expert. If you feel you can reach out to URA and you know meet the obligations that you're supposed to meet. Uh, when you talked about objections, it brought back to mind a dear Mm. URA has this alternative dispute resolution mm. initiative. Mm. Uh, can you please you know, shine some light into it if a taxpayer wants to go through it? Before one goes to the alternative dispute resolution, okay. you first file this objection. Okay. Then uh, you expect us to give you an objection decision within 90 days from the date you filed. That means when we give you a decision, we are either um, maintaining what you gave us or we are not maintaining it partially or wholly. So whatever comes out of the objection decision will be what will force you to go for ADR. Okay. Because you may not need to go for ADR <laughs> once we have, uh, once we have accepted the objection the way you've given it to us. Okay. So ADR may not may happen. Not. But once you feel you are not satisfied with the objection decision, okay. that is when the alternative dispute resolution may come, come in. in to see that you get um, maybe a better or you get a second hearing of what exactly yes, you need to get. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Hapsa. Uh, we're getting some flowers. Uh, Levi Magona is saying, I'm just appreciating what you're doing. I've really learned something that is very, very, uh, thank you, Levi. Uh, and then uh, Gilbert is saying, good, good insights from Hafsa Seguia, your flowers. Uh, and Karumbo is saying, thank you for the clarity. Hey. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much to Hafsa for being such an amazing resource. We have learned so much and I'm sure the taxpayers have gotten all their questions answered. We've literally cleared everything out. And to our taxpayers, thank you for working so hard to develop our country. Now the time has come for you to file your returns and make your payments. Please go on and make, meet your tax obligations. We pray that you enjoy this Christmas season and continue to be blessed. Thank you and take care. In chairs, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. And here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream, Tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today.